As the fallout from Rachel Reeves' long-awaited budget continues, small family farmers accuse the Chancellor of signing the death warrant for their businesses. Yes, in fact, on the front pages of the papers this mm. morning, some are even saying they're going to go on strike. We mm. were talking, weren't we, about what a strike might look like um, in terms of farmers, because it's not really like you can't turn um, up to work, but they're literally saying... They will hold back the food, yeah. They're going to hold food on their farm. Now, uh, we're hoping we can talk to the Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Darren Jones, in just a moment. Um, I think he's just uh, trying to sort out his hearing. Oh, apparently you're there. Hello. You can hear us. <laughs> Hello, we've got so much to talk to you about, Mr Jones, but we were just talking there about farmers and the catch they feel they're in in terms of some of the changes to inheritance tax because, of course, it's slightly different for farmers, isn't it, than perhaps other businesses or land or inheritance for people. Is this something that you considered when looking at the budget, how it might impact them? And why aren't they considered working people, the people that you promised not to raise taxes for? Uh, good morning, and sorry about that. I managed to unclip my um, uh, earpiece, uh, so forgive me. Um, uh, before the budget, how did agricultural property relief work? It meant that you could inherit farm estates without paying inheritance tax. It cost about a billion pounds a year for taxpayers to put that uh, exemption in place. And around half of that cost went to only 63 of the most kind of wealthiest estates in the country with a kind of median value of about eight million pounds. What have we done now? Uh, we've said that you can get the first million pounds tax free. And then for any value over that, you get a 50 percent deduction. So the inheritance tax is about 20 percent. That's still quite a generous settlement. And importantly, for smaller farms, often the family home is on the farm. And so actually, if you've got a married couple who are living in the farmhouse on the farm estate, they already benefit from their primary residence uh, rates, which means that if they, uh, when they die and they want to pass that down to their children, they get £2 million of that value exempt from tax. And so in the round, uh, we think that this is a, a, a kind of good offer in the fiscally constrained environment we're in, where we need to make sure that we've got taxes going into the NHS whilst protecting working people from income tax and national insurance rises. So why are they threatening to strike then after the budget when they weren't before, if you say it's actually better for them? Uh, well, because people don't like it when they have to pay more tax. And I understand that. But the promise we made at the election was not to increase income tax and national insurance on employees in your payslip. That's a promise I think, that sorry, we've Sorry honoured. to interrupt, but, but, it, but, but I think that's, that's possibly a bit misleading. I think when you hear figures like a million pounds and two million pounds, people think, oh, gosh, that's a lot of money. It but, is. of course, yeah. that is in the land that perhaps, you know, the father who's in their 80s still owns, but their son has been working that and that's their business and their home and where their children live. It's locked up in the land. And in order to pay that tax, they have to sell it and they have no business. No, because you can actually buy insurance for inheritance tax liabilities in the future. So for farmers today who will be having children, you can buy relatively inexpensive insurance products to buy out the risk of inheritance tax uh, in the future. But look, if you're making promises well, does, to protect... How does that have helped them now? Well, it will help in the future. But to protect working people, as we've done with income tax and national insurance, to not increase VAT, which would have affected the cost of food that farmers provide to our supermarkets, to maintain the rate of corporation tax, the tax that businesses pay on their profits for the whole course of this parliament, in the context of inheriting public finances that were out of control under the Conservatives, the Chancellor had to make some tax decisions to be able to balance the books. And as I say, in the way in we've designed this scheme for agricultural property relief, up to £2 million tax-free if the family home is on the farm, if not, up to a £1 million tax-free, and over that, even a 50% cut to the standard rate of inheritance tax at only 20%. I think most people at home recognise that that's a pretty reasonable yeah. thing to do. Well, one of the major tax decisions uh, Rachel Reeves has made, and you have made, your government has made, has been seen higher rates in the employer's national insurance rate and also lowering the threshold. Now, this is something the Tory government planned to do in 2021. Let me just read you a quote. 
This is from someone in 2021. It is so worrying that at this crucial time, the Prime Minister and the Chancellor concocted a new jobs tax to arrive in the spring. Despite all their election promises to cut national insurance contributions, they are actually raising them against the strong advice of businesses and trade unions. That quote from 2021 is from Rachel Reeves. It's blatant hypocrisy, isn't it, by the Labour government? Well, no, because in 2021, uh, that was before the Conservatives cut employee national insurance rates, as they did twice before the election, costing £20 billion. So £20 billion was paying for public services at the point at which the Chancellor made that comment. Since then, the Conservatives took £20 billion out of public services in a way that was not funded. And so you either cut £20 billion from public services or you find tax rises to fill the hole that we've inherited, whilst honouring your manifesto commitments to protect working people. So the situation has changed, the world has but, changed, but the point is, though, and we have the, to deal with that as we find it. But the point is, as Rachel Reeves called it then, it's a, it's a jobs tax, and this is affecting people one way or the other. Either wages are going to come down or consumer products and services are going to go higher. And also, the employers themselves are... are as you noticed last night when you were on BBC's Question Time, an employer turned around to you and said, you've made her the villain. There'll be lots of people out there saying, you've made a really tough time for lots of businesses up and down the country. Well, look, we've designed the employer uh, national insurance contribution scheme to protect the smallest businesses. So by increasing the allowance, the level at which you start to pay employer NICs from £5,000 to £10,500, around 50% of all businesses in this country will either pay the same they were paying before or will pay less. That means that bigger businesses are being asked to contribute more to help pay for the National Health Service and other public services. And some of those companies might choose to reduce executive pay or share buybacks or the dividend payments they're making to their shareholders in order to be able to uh, absorb some of those costs. That's for business to decide. But the Labour Party manifesto was clear that we would be protecting working people by not increasing the headline rates of income tax and national insurance that employees pay in their payslip, as well as VAT, and for businesses, I should say, the corporation tax rate on their profits. Those are promises that we've honoured at this budget. I mean, you're talking about things that big business might know about, things like executive chairs and dividends and paybacks. I guess the people that are really upset are the small businesses, the hairdressers, the little, you know, nail spas, the small businesses that are not in a position to be offering executive buyback shares. And those are the people that are the working people you wanted to protect. Yes, and they are protected with this employer and exchange. Because if you are a small business, as I say, 50% of businesses in the country under this new scheme will either pay the same they were paying before or pay less. Because we've raised the level at which you start having to pay that tax. We've doubled it, more than doubled it, from 5,000 to 10,500 pounds. So if you've got a small coffee shop on the high street or a hairdresser that employs uh, four or five people, uh, they will find that they're paying the same or less. And by the way, We've also well, taken the decision... if they pay them that amount, you know, if they don't pay them under that threshold anyway... Yeah, so overall their tax bill will come down because you don't pay below that threshold. But also, by the way, just to finish my point, uh, we've also made Sorry. business rates permanently cheaper for small businesses on the high street. So their business rates bill is now secure and lower than it has been in the past. Right. And if they are a small business, they are protected by the design of the Employer National Insurance Scheme. I guess what people feel is that, uh, you know, this this uh, budget has been painful. It's been a big budget. Rachel Rees says it was once in a parliament budget, but it's been a tough pill to swallow for lots of people. And I guess that what they want to feel reassured that it's not going to get worse. Front page of The Guardian this morning, not a paper that's particularly anti-Labour usually, is saying that the chance has been warned that an extra £9 billion of tax rises might be needed to avoid the effect on public services. George Osborne also saying that, that that tax hike might have to come within two years in order to see the improvement in public services this budget was a designed to achieve. So that assumes that current public services... Sorry, public services perform at their current levels of productivity. And people watching this show will know that, at the moment, most of our public services are not performing very well after 14 years of cuts to the investment into public services. So uh, we have an absolute priority on reforming and modernising our public services so that they perform more productively 
in the future as, as well as growth uh, in the economy. Uh, so I don't recognise those figures because it assumes that you make no progress in improving the delivery of public services, which is not what this government is going to do. This government is going to improve the can, performance of public services. Can, can I just get a clear line from you? Are, are you ruling out any rise in income tax in the future then? You said you've done it now. Are you ruling it out? Will we not see a rise in income tax? Yeah, so our manifesto commitment not to increase income tax or national insurance rates for employees or to increase VAT or to increase corporation tax on business profits, those are tax promises that will last for the whole of this parliament, not just this budget in this year, but each and every year between now and the next election. Very how, clear. How, how can you be so sure of that, though? I mean, you don't know what's coming ahead. And, and, and the IFS and people are saying that you haven't done enough to support public services and growth. How can you be absolutely certain of, of the road ahead and, and that you won't have to charge people more income tax? Because that's the promise we made at the election in our manifesto, and it's a promise that we're going to honour. What that does mean is that we've had to make other difficult decisions in this budget in order to get a grip of the public finances that we've inherited. And it means that the big challenge for this government is about working with business to get growth back into the economy and, crucially, modernising and improving the delivery of public services, whether it's in health or education or the use of hotels for asylum seekers or SEND or social care. There's a whole list of public services that are in desperate need right. of investment, and support and modernisation, and Darren that is Jones. the job that we have to do. Yeah. Darren Jones, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.